All right, y'all. Welcome to ZDS 073, 072. I, I can't even read. <laughs> we were with Craig Spence. Craig, how you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, in Stockholm at the moment. It's snowing today and it's kind of delightful. So I'm happy to be here. Nice. How's how's the situation over there? I know last time we talked to you, so you were in New Zealand last, last time and you were yeah. kind of dreading going back to Sweden. Uh, yeah. Understandably. <laughs> well, like, it's fine. It It's really hard to describe. It almost feels like everyone's being kind of gaslit by the entire country. Because mm. if you look at the numbers, they're really bad. But day to day, it's quite normal. Like, um, there's not really any restrictions in place. Um, you can just go about, I think, like, bars close a bit early and some public things are closed. Um, but I'm I'm healthy, <laughs> you know. I, I'm oh, pretty good. good. Um, it's been like minus twelve the last week, and then now it's just like below zero, which is very exciting for me. So I'm kind of enjoying enjoying that part. Um, is that is that minus twelve Celsius or Fahrenheit? Yeah, Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. I think uh, is that. I, I, I'm trying to do the conversion in my head. I feel like I, that's, uh, that's probably that's probably about negative twelve Fahrenheit too. I think it, I think they um they collide at minus forty. Oh, I really? Think. Oh, I don't I don't know. This is some mess. <laughs> it's it's snowing. Put it that it's way. Snowing. It's snowing okay, and, it's, and it's cold outside. Yeah. Um. So there's there's that. Yeah. Um. But cool, you know, just working and living and. Yeah, I I definitely I definitely resonate with you on the being gaslit piece. Like, um, you go through downtown here in Gilbert in Arizona. And like all the restaurants are open, you couldn't tell anything's going on except for that. When you look at the sports games on on the TVs, everyone's wearing masks there. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, ah, uh, it's just it's just so weird. Um, yeah, it's I, been I, I, like. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. The um, sorry. <laughs> the 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 real big cognitive dissonance at the moment is that um, so New Zealand had one case in the last couple of days. And so everyone there is like, okay, what's going on? We've got this one case. What are we going to do? How's the process going to work? All these things. And it's fine. And then here it's like, you know, thousands of cases and no one really. So it's, it's, there's some dissonance there, but it, it's, it's fine. You know, I, yeah. I'm mostly, it's, it's winter. So I'm staying inside anyway. So, you know. Yeah. Well, I definitely feel like my, my reaction to the whole thing has been like up and down a little bit too. Like I've, I've gone from this will kill us all to like, is this even a thing to like, I don't know, but you, you track the numbers, like trying to, trying to cancel out all my subjectivity and like, just look at something objective and the numbers it's like, well, we're clearly we're still on the up with uh, by every metric so yeah it's just... and it's it's a thing i've been thinking about a bit lately of like how do we as humans look at risk and mm. do we understand risk like people comparing it to the flu it's like okay cool symptomatically they're kind of similar but we've had flus for a long time we know how that behaves we didn't necessarily know how this was going to behave so I don't know. I think abundance of caution, but also look at the numbers and see what's going on. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of interesting stuff all around there too. I think like, um, as humans, I think there was, there's a study about us being like, especially conditioned to, to like, uh, to like under, undervalue, like <laughs> undervalue something that's risky right like if there's any risk involved it's, it's just baked into our dna just stay away because <laughs> like even though if you if you run it objectively like this is this is uh just looking at the numbers this is a net positive we if there's any negatives associated with we tend to s s like step away from it which is just odd like when you think about it but, yeah but also you know from a survivability point of view i guess it makes sense makes sense <laughs> humans why would anyone of years of evolution can't be wrong right <laughs> why would anyone exist yeah exactly. <sighs> well see cfps were were up recently for ng comp ng comp just i guess they closed it saturday at midnight i know you had something on twitter you were showing with uh oh i'm gonna pronounce it wrong you drassel is that <sighs> look I'm going to be honest. I don't even know how to pronounce it. All I know is... How are you going to do the talk, man? I will learn. Look, okay. I, 
I have to get accepted first. Like it's a, it's a, it's a pretty rigorous process and I only had one good idea this year. So, so we'll see. Um, I guess the CFP is done. So there's no harm in talking about what I submitted. Um, I submitted a talk called um, as guardians of the AST yes. and I, I want to do like a, okay. Yggdrasil, like the world tree from Norse mythology. Um, mm. Turns out it's an AST. Let's do some stuff with that. Um, recycling old gimmicks as i want to do um yeah but yeah it should be fun if any I, if music I involved this time or well we'll see like i mean the whole guardians vibe from the movies like music was pretty central to that so i'm thinking um you know hit some 80s jams see where we go <laughs> yeah dude i'm all about that aesthetic that sort of like 80s pop stuff that's totally kind of synthy vibe yeah they, they they nail it so well in that movie too i feel like honestly the, some of my favorites yeah the the thor ragnarok one kind of had a similar feel to it it seemed to me but yeah totally yeah and that's uh my fellow countryman taka waititi doing his thing and being being incredible so um yeah that's awesome so he's from new zealand he so. is yeah 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 that's um so he's the he's the voice for the character korg as well um which is that delightful rock monster thing um Oh, the guy who's like, <laughs> who's yeah, like the, apologetic. Exactly, and so yeah. that's that's the um, that's the director as well. Um, and wow. so yeah, he's the. I never do that, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> classic Kiwi accent, and we can uh, <laughs> talk more about that. <laughs> nice. I don't hear it so much from you. I feel like that's weird. Like I think. Do, do you when you go when you travel? Do you lose it? I've I've always had people be confused by my accent. Um, I don't know if I, I definitely cover it up a bit when I'm talking to people who aren't Kiwis, but it it, it slips back in. Like the um, the I's and the O's and the U's, they normally get pretty smushed in New Zealand English. And so if you talk a bit slower or a little bit clearer, it, it balances out a bit. But if I start talking about New Zealand, it's like just mushed um or like fish and chips i don't know there's some words in there <laughs> that um that it comes out a bit more huh that's interesting <laughs> i'll be listening out for it but yeah, yeah. I, I it sounds like american to me almost your your accent so it's it's weird i've so, definitely heard that before when i yeah. sing it's definitely very american so who knows oh. maybe i'm putting it on somehow i don't know it just it, in my subconscious yeah i'm not i'm not i'm an, not a good singer by any means, but I distinctly remember at certain points in my life thinking, okay, just sound British. It'll make you sing better. <laughs> like when, when I just do <laughs> with friends, but I don't know. I think um, definitely living overseas um, and hearing more accents. The, the tragic one for me is that sometimes I'll be, you know, just floating around and I'll, I'll hear an Australian accent. And there's a moment where I'm like, is that a Kiwi or is that Australia? And, for me to not be able to tell them apart is just tragic. It's um as soon as I'm home, it's like it sinks back in and all those things. But yeah, while I'm while I'm away, it's more more difficult. That's, that's really cool. So <laughs> so so they're close then the 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 Australian and the New Zealand accent, but yeah. but a true native could tell. Well, it, yeah, you definitely can tell. Like um the difference is so if I say like fish and chips in the most neutral way I can say it. The most Kiwi version is like fush and chups. And the most Australian version is like fish and chips. It's like, there's. <laughs> I love the smile on your face. I just you have to concentrate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, just the vowels. I think like um, there's quite a lot of shared like lingo. Like we use a lot of the same words. Like there's a lot of mates and years and all those kind of things. But mm. kind of like American and Canadian, I would say. Okay. Yeah, Similar Canadians, but... Canadians, <laughs> they, I, 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 I feel like the way you, you identify them is they sound American, but they apologize a lot. Right? I think that's fair. It's like Australians <laughs> that apologize might be a Kiwi. Yeah, maybe that's there you a, go. Yeah. Australian. <laughs> they sound Australian, but they're apologizing. That sounds like a Kiwi. Got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so can, can we talk more about your talk idea or do? Yeah, yeah. Do we, okay, cool. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, if if anyone has seen any talks I've done in the past, um, they're amazing. 
<laughs> I've done a few that have been like um, AST based because um, it's something that I really care about, something that I noticed really leveled me up as an engineer in my career. Um, and something that, in my experience, a lot of front end engineers haven't necessarily been exposed to um, in your day to day web work. Um, ASTs in particular don't really come up that much, but they're really, really powerful. Um, and I'd always been kind of trying to figure out a way to somehow shoehorn a Marvel talk into something. And then like the, the guardians of the AST thing popped into my head about a year ago. Um, and I was like, how does this work? How does this work? And then, you know, I was looking into the kind of as guardians of the galaxy thing. Um, and I was like, oh man, I can combine those. And so what I'm going to try to do is basically, um, take the idea of Idrisil, which is the world tree in like Norse mythology. Um, it's the, the thing that holds all the realms together in their kind of worldview. Um, and the idea that like, that's a tree. Okay, cool. That's a tree. We know about some other types of trees, um, whether it's a DOM tree in, in the web or an abstract syntax tree in AST. Um, how do we, how do we smush some story in there to also teach about about how these trees can be manipulated can be can be examined all those kind of things um and then i'll add some Groot jokes in there and be done <laughs> some root jokes and some, some Groot jokes oh, yes well, I, yeah <laughs> but uh so so it's interesting because the reason i reached out to you was um i was looking up uh stuff about asts uh, i was actually working with uh, mike brocky and he was just like um, I think he was writing some schematics or something like that. And I've written schematics in the past. I have purposely avoided ASTs because it seems like this really big learning curve. And I'm like, I can usually just hit this with string manipulation kind of stuff, you know? And it's so I, I do that and it's, 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 I know, I know my solutions are not as good, you know, as if I could use an AST, but I never really thought to dig in there. And then digging in there, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like this is like the, the same stuff we're doing here in this TypeScript file is the same thing we do in Angular with with like DOM manipulation and that whole stuff. It's the same, it's the same concept. Like you said, it's it's a tree. Yep. <laughs> like the trees can only be so many things. And there's so many similarities between the two. And uh, I was looking up at TS Query, which I guess is your project. <laughs> That's what prompted me to reach out to you. And I was like, this is so cool. Because you're essentially, um, if, if I may paraphrase the project, it's like you're using, uh, like you as if you were using CSS selectors to identify a node in the DOM. You're using similar, like a selector queries to target a node in your TypeScript syntax tree, and you can figure out something from there. So you can say, well, I need the object, give me the object literal that would, that is named, I don't know, uh, Zach <laughs> and find his height property, you know, and, and you can do that. And that's, that's very cool. So, yeah, I mean, I wish I could claim credit for all of it. Um, <laughs> The only thing that I did was I took the API from a, a library called ES Query, um, yes. which was based off this uh, the ES tree spec. So that's the the JavaScript AST. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is amazing. Um, I want that for TypeScript. So I stole the API, stole the, the selector parser magic, um, yeah. and then implemented the, the TypeScript tree traversal part of it. Um, but yeah, that's, it, that's you say that like it's trivial. That seems like it's actually quite a feat. Is it? Is it not? <laughs> I mean, it's some code. You can go read the code. There's not a lot yeah. of it. Um, once <laughs> once you've done some tree stuff, it you see these things pop out all the time. Mm. Um, and like like you said, like the classic with um, with you know schematics particularly is that yeah, you can do a lot of these things with just string manipulation, and you can get a long way with that. Um, I think it's worth talking about the reason why ASTs are better. Like you said, you yes. might not have the best solution, but um, the classic is you're going through some file um, and I don't know, there's some commented out lines of code in there. Um, do you want to manipulate that with your string query or not? 
and like more often than not i think it's kind of weird too right you might have yeah. some some identifier that you've commented out that was some old code or whatever or some some function syntax and with a regex or some string manipulation you'll impact that but with an ast based transform you won't so you're it's that that's kind of the classic reason that i would say not also regexes are just really really hard to get right um having to do things like deal with um you know indentation you know if else statements and mm -hmm. white space and all those things um they just go away when you start talking about it like a tree yeah 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 um, so that that's exactly the problems i would hit it would be like well i need to add this to the imports array of <laughs> of like the ng module that's that's like the typical case right yeah. and it's like okay I can find something in the string that says imports colon and that, and then like, just like jam it in after that, um, yep. <laughs> after that curly brace and then run prettier afterwards, and, you know, <laughs> we'll be good. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the, the goal. But as soon as you do something like if that's just formatted slightly off, like you said, there's some unexpected white space in there. Um, that's all it would take. And maybe you could like trim around that still, but you, like the, the example I talked about, like finding inside of this file, find the Zach object, the object name Zach and find its height property. That whole thing can be ridiculously hard in string manipulation versus, um, like using this query. It seems like it's essentially a one liner. If you can, if you can get to, you know, getting good at these kind of selector, um, things. Uh, yeah, is that is is it selector query? Is that the right word for it? Yeah, I guess I I think um it's it's essentially stolen the um the CSS syntax. So you have like yeah, it, a seemed, node it felt type. very familiar, right? Yeah. Familiar. So. Yeah. So the, the only advantage is um I believe the original parser has implemented a parent selector, um which you don't have in CSS, and that's kind of useful sometimes. Um, yeah. But in general, it's um, once you do a few of them, you start seeing the patterns that come out. Like the first time, it's weird. You're like, what is a variable declarator or some other node type that's like the internals? Um, what is a unary operator? You know, words that we don't talk about all the time. Um, but once you've done a few, you, you kind of figure out the patterns. And, and more often than not, you are doing the same kind of things. You know, you're adding another import or you're adding a property to an object, all those kind of things. Um, so you, you get used to it pretty quick. But the, um, the kind of fundamental idea of like, cool, I have some text in a file. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn that into a tree. I'm going to query that tree. I'm going to add some new stuff to the tree or I'm going to remove some stuff from the tree, um, like you said. It's exactly what we do day in, day out. Um, yeah. It's and so using the models from from DOM, it makes sense. So whether it's um, code gen, you know, you can do. Um, uh, I at the same time that I did TS query, um, I did another little port of, a, of an API that I haven't ever really used, um, and I never really talked about either. So there's um, a library called ES template in okay. um, the JavaScript world, and so I made TS template. And I really haven't used it in any anger, but it's the equivalent essentially. So it's like um, if you've ever used any of the like low dash templating functions or handlebars or anything kind of old school like that, it's yeah. that, but AST based. Um, Interesting. And so that that ends up quite fun too. It's more like um, moving around DOM nodes kind of thing. Yes. Um, well, that the, using just TS query. Um, I, so I would, uh, in the, in the solution I was looking at, I, I was actually just looking to like, uh, bump the version <laughs> inside of like my, my angular, uh, thing on like a deploy. And so I was like, well, I, I should just learn how to do this right <laughs> because this is being hard just with string manipulation. So I, I figured it out. It's like, okay, I got, I got my new, I got my version, like I got the previous version. I just want to bump that. And it was like, well, what do I, what do I, how do I, how do I bump it? And I was like, yep. okay, I guess, I mean, I've got the, the string start and the string end from my tedious query query. I guess I could just like, um, use what was I, the, the FS, the, the node FS, uh, file, uh, API to yep. just write over it and just like split the string <laughs> so it still felt like i was doing string manipulation at the end of the day but yeah. at least it was like very very precise string manipulation but it would have been much nicer to to use i think what 
what you're talking about here with TS template, where after I am able to select something in the in the tree to actually like switch it out and then put it back together and then write it out to the file, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And so there's there's actually a little helper function in TS query as well, um, oh, yeah? which again I never docked because um, you still sit open source, um, but there's <laughs> this TS query dot replace. Okay. Okay. Um, and it will it basically cause a function every time it finds a node that matches your thing, and okay. you can just return a string from it. Um, and so it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's like AST so, based selector, and then just put a string in there. That's perfect. The, well, <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> yeah. The, the one issue with it is it's very easy to get invalid code at the end. Mm. So you yeah. can insert a bad string. Um, for for the nicety of the API, it's kind of worth it, but. With yeah. the TS template way, it's like you're pretty much guaranteed that it's at least syntactically valid. Yeah. So there's That's, some trade-offs there. Yeah. Well, I imagine like most of the time, I imagine this is probably, it, was this part of the ES um, query API as well, the replace? I don't think was... so. I think that might have been a me. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I was, I was just saying because um, that sounds like for the most part that covers like the majority of the use cases you would be using this for. So that, yep. that makes sense that it's in the API. The, the only other thing would be like, well, there's some times where you're not replacing something, right? You just want to find the node so you can like put something in like a list before it or, yep. or immediately after this node in an array. So do you, is there similar helpers for that? Or are we, are we left to ourselves? <laughs> I'm trying to think, um, the, I think. Sorry to put you on the spot. Uh, I, 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 so, um, to be honest, I haven't haven't actually used it in a little while. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think the I think the function gets the node that you're replacing with. So I think you could like append to it rather. I don't, I don't know. There's um okay. there's a lot of tests in that repo, so there might be a test that does that if there was an example. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think um, it's so hard. Like yeah. In, in a lot of cases, the string thing is fine. Yeah. And like, then then there's a, this correct way to do it. And I'm like, ah, oh, if you're doing yeah. like a schematic for your little company or your project or whatever, just strings are probably fine. Fix it when it breaks. It's not necessarily yeah. worth the um, the pain for, for schematics, I will say. Um, where I would pretty much start saying just always use an AST is when we start talking about like lint rules. Yeah. Because false yeah. positives on lint rules are just the worst. Um, and yeah. so in, in that case, like um, actually querying it properly. Um, so ES lint has got a similar mechanism to this built into it. It's got this kind of query syntax when you're writing a lint rule. Um, and so in that case, like, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely use the tree properly. Um, right. but it's kind of, it's kind of like anything, like get it to work and then refactor it later if you yeah. break it. Yeah. Well, to, to be honest, man, like having, having finally like dipped a toe into ASTs for, for like the side project I was bumping the version on, I was like, man, I wish I had done this earlier. Cause <laughs> it, there like the stream manipulation, even for these, for these more trivial like examples, they get hard real quick, like yep. with string manipulation. And uh, I would, I would have much preferred to have had at least have this as a tool, like maybe not use it all the time, or mm -hmm. maybe just like use it to get the node and then maybe get a starting position and end position and then kind of do similar stuff at the end, like bring it ASTs, but also use some string manipulation to like just jam some stuff in the string afterwards and then run prettier again, <laughs> make it all pretty. And then you're, and then you're good. But yeah, I think yeah, you, I you often come to a point where it's like, okay, should I learn regex or should I learn ASTs? Oh. And <laughs> that's not the nicest position to be in either way. It's kind yeah. of just like pick your poison. Um, but yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've put off, well, I, I'm familiar with the principles of regex, but every time I look at it, man, it looks like someone just like spazzed out on their keyboard or something. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't get it, but um, yeah, it's, it's very hard for me to parse. But yeah, the, the there's a um, there's like a phrase about this, right? Like if you if you use if you use um, regex to solve your problem, you now have two problems. Exactly. <laughs> the problem you had before, and now learning regex. So yeah. 
and and like like regex isn't great like there's there's a ton of reasons why they're useful but more yeah. often than not the problem you actually want is a parser you want you want to pass it you want to do something with the structure um yeah. it's like i mean there's the classic stack overflow answer of trying to pass html with regex um if, if you haven't ever seen that i recommend looking it up um i'll have to check it out <laughs> yeah but just strings are hard um it's it's much nicer in my experience to treat a file as data and that's mm -hmm. basically what you're doing you're saying cool this is no different from some json structure or from some html structure it's just a tree and i know how to use trees because that's most of my job so yeah. let's use lose, lose trees you know yeah um, well it's it's interesting to think about it because well especially html i i wonder if um uh, th there's there's times where I forget I'm working with a tree, but for the most part, I can say, okay, this is like I understand the relationships here. It's built into the indentation scheme we use. It's like, it's it it's how I think about things. Like there's there's a hierarchy here. That, that hierarchy is the tree essentially, right? But the when I look at a TypeScript file, I never think that. And then I like was looking into the AST stuff. And I was like wait <laughs> it was like the matrix was like pulling out and i was seeing things man like i was really seeing things yeah like for the first time i felt like i really saw typescript and there's there's like the um what is it the ast ts playground so you yeah. can just like dump in some typescript code and it'll like it'll, it'll break it out for you like a json object or like some html code yeah. that was really interesting to see just like okay, this is what's happening. And I imagine that's like what TSC is doing, right? Like it's building that tree and then it's doing whatever it has to do to transpile that down to JavaScript. And exactly. now imagine because it, JavaScript is similar, this is like what Babel's doing too when you have to go down to like, uh, <laughs> when you build out to a browser and stuff like yep. that. I was just like, it, it was this weird piece of of black box that I've always had in my in my understanding of how things work, and I was like, "Got it! <laughs> like yeah. this makes sense now. This is this is totally. what's happening in all those tools. This so. is and this is this is literally every tool that you've ever thought of, pretty much. It's like, cool. How does Prettier work? Oh, yes, it's an AST. Oh, how does um, Webpack work? Oh, it's an AST. How does SAS work? Oh, it's a it's CSS." Uh, AST. Oh, how, you know, it's all of these things are just um, building up this tree structure. Um, yeah. And like I keep saying AST, probably we should say what that means at one point in this thing. Um, <laughs> so if you've never heard of one before, an AST is an abstract syntax tree. Um, and that is not a very useful name, um, but the syntax bit gives you a hint. It describes um, the structure of a language, just like syntax in English or French or Swedish does. Um, and the abstract bit means that it's disassociated from that language. So the classic example is, is kind of transpilation. So if we go from um, TypeScript to JavaScript, um, those trees are roughly equivalent um, you can have the same tree for both those types of code. Um, it doesn't, you don't, looking at the tree, you don't necessarily know the type of code it came from. It could have also come from Lisp. It could have come from C++, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. It's describing structure rather than the actual characters, I think is probably the best way to talk about it. Yeah. Yep. So so the, the main difference then between TypeScript, a TypeScript AST and a JavaScript AST, as I imagine, is there's just... There's um there's a few more Lego blocks in the TypeScript one, right? Yep. Like, because you you can declare interfaces. Well, I guess there's classes in JavaScript too, but they're just used a little bit differently. But you you you, have, you sort of have this like other dimension of of nodes you can add to yes. to enforce the typing, um and these these are the ones that kind of get pulled out when you when you transpile down to JavaScript. So yep. it's it's kind of in that in that way it's almost very very nice to, to think of it that way because you think okay totally. like the the javascript ones here i could just kind of like ignore <laughs> the typescript pieces of the of the tree and okay we're, this looks yeah. familiar now and i imagine you gotta like um well I, essentially you're, you're kind of like polyfilling for some stuff too right like because to to get down to um uh, what is it like es5 or the the stuff that gets sent to the browsers you gotta yeah. get rid of like your uh, you got to take your, your arrow syntax and turn that into native function calls. And you got to like, what's the right word? 
attach the context properly depending yep. on if it's an arrow function or a regular function and it is yeah yeah and this, that's this actually a really thing. interesting point because like when yeah. you when you think about in um so say uh es 2021 ast um there there's some nuance here that i won't talk about but you can think about the difference between a, a arrow function and a function just say you've got some some function that doesn't know about this, basically. Yeah. The only difference between those functions at an AST point of view is a Boolean flag, mm. right? It's, is this an arrow function or not? Because yeah. the arrow bit is just syntax. It's just mm. like niceties that mean it's less characters for us to write. Yeah. The AST doesn't care about that. It's right. a function. It has some parameters. It has a return value. Yeah. Um, and well, so a body, you know. Yeah, for, for anyone who's maybe not as familiar as JavaScript as we're forced to be, like the, the big difference between the the arrow, an arrow function, which is like the defining of a function, like kind of in line more with, with like a, an equal sign and a, what is that, the caret, um, and just like a call, declaring a function using like the keyword function is the, the, the what, what does this mean in that context? So an arrow function means like a lexical this, which is, like in the context of like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this, Craig, maybe you can help me out. Like it's, it's in the context of your file, like in the context of your your it's, natural it's, lexical. It's the context in which the function was declared. Yes, there you go. So you've got like, when you create a function in JavaScript, a normal function, not an arrow function, you are basically taking a snapshot of the world around you and saying, that's what my this is right now. Um, yes. With an arrow, um, when that moves around, it doesn't change. So yes. there's some, but the, the cool thing about that is obviously that's a really hard thing for us to know in our brains, but it's not a uh, syntactic structure. Yeah. So from an AST point of view, it's just a function. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's just some code structure. Um, it's, a, it's a function and it's a Boolean is arrow function. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And so <laughs> if, if you could ignore all the, um, the weirdness about this, um, mm -hmm. The transform from uh, ES2021 AST to an ES5 AST is just mm -hmm. remove those flags. Oh, dang. And then put it through a code gen and it's it's transpiled. Yeah. So you kind of like, obviously there will be other things in, in play there, but um, kind of how you think about it is just like, oh, cool, this is just data. This is just a thing with a name, a function. And yeah. it could be a, a generator function, right? Mm -hmm. Like. That's just a generator true flag. It could be an async function. That's just yeah. another another flag. So it's yeah, um, I'm, I'm having a, a flash moment here too. So minimizing your code when you're doing similar things, I imagine, is just doing the same thing, but taking yeah. all of your every time you name something, you're just like you just yeah. make that as small as possible. Yeah, that... It's just character plus plus and then swap nice. it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's take your if else statement and flip it into a ternary statement. Mm. it's um you know take your oh, what's some i can't think of good minimization examples anymore i haven't thought about this anymore um you know i guess you can remove all the white space is a, is a really easy one right um yeah. all, all those kind of things um oh. when all you this... ignore the syntax you just left with a tree structure and then you go smush um yeah well that, that's okay, that's send over the wire and that's yeah that's it oh man that's so cool i i, I mean I, I one more example just realized this right now oh sorry yeah. go ahead with your example yeah one more example i can think of that is that is probably the coolest part is um once you've got a structure that is a tree it can be a bit easier to identify parts of the tree that look the same right so imagine yeah. you have two functions and two files with two different names that were written by two different developers. Um, if you take that and you compare their trees and the only thing that is different about them is the, um, the, name. the name, you can go, oh, I've got duplicate functions here. I can swap them out. Or from like a tree shaking point of view, you can go, oh, I've got this exported function, but it's not used anywhere. I can just remove that part of the tree. Tree shaking makes so much more sense too now. Right. Like just the, the, the phrase tree shaking. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. It's you are <laughs> shaking away part of an abstract syntax tree, essentially. Yes, that, that's not used. So like, yeah. I mean, in that case, it's like, it's a dependency tree and there's another tree inside that. So 
another another place where trees pop up is dependencies in um in javascript files right yes. that's what um, i'm familiar with quite a bit with yeah. uh working on nx stuff but yeah. yes yeah i mean there's another one dependencies between projects in an nx workspace yep uh yarn or npm dependencies these but it starts getting a bit trickier and we start talking about different types of graph <laughs> um, and then you start getting pretty high cool. But um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so trees by definition are hierarchical and like acyclical, right? Yes. Like that's, yep. that's how you get to, well, that, so that's how you get from a graph to specifically a tree. Yes. Yeah. If you don't have any, um, any references to itself within the tree, then it stays being a tree. Yeah. Right. And, and you, you mess with that. So one of the banes of my existence, I feel like is circular dependencies. That's exactly that. But that's when your tree stops being a tree and starts being a, a cyclical graph, yep. which means that like uh, something down on the tree points back to something towards the top, yep. making it no longer a tree. But and this yeah. is the thing that you sometimes see in, in JSON. You know, if you try to stringify an object and it comes up and goes, error, circular reference. Yes. Um, it's that same thing. JSON yeah. is inherently a tree. There is no, no structural um, repetition within it. Um, so uh, as soon as you try to stringify one of these trees, it doesn't work. Yeah. So when when like so that's like if something in this object is pointing it to a reference to something higher up in the object, and then that that whole thing just is kind of like a mind. Totally. <laughs> kind of like yeah. A mind <laughs> yeah. There's but no yeah. there's no nice word for it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, just I was trying. I was trying. Craig. I was trying. To a mind next. bender. Ooh. A mind <laughs> bender. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. It, yeah it, 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 these things start popping up everywhere. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, the funny thing to me is that if you have a uh, regex, there's a regex AST as well, right? Wait. Somewhere in there, the regex <laughs> is being passed. Yeah. And passing well, of that be. regex language turns into a tree. It's yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Well, I imagine, yeah, it's, I mean, it's essentially the same thing, right? Like, we could have done, you could have made your own tree based thing to parse other tree based things. Literally, that, it's, yeah. it's trees all the way down. That's, that's what you kind of come to realize with this stuff. And to kind of loop back to what we were talking about at the start, this yeah. is why I think it's really important to talk about these things. Because yeah. like, um, there's so many angles for it. Like, ever want to do a PR against Webpack? You know, mm -hmm. you're going to probably need to understand some of the stuff. Um, yes. Ever want to write your own lint rule? Um, probably going to need to know some of the stuff um your own schematics you don't need to but super helpful yeah. to know this stuff um oh absolutely so yeah. with, with with all these kinds of tasks you're you're describing i feel like my my mo if i if i'm ever assigned something like this or i gotta do this it's like okay time to whip out the elbow grease we're gonna make this work <laughs> you know and and uh to to just like turn that on its side a little bit i'm, I'm trying to get better at being more efficient at tackling these things it feels like just it's the that parable of like the the axe cutter like you got to sharpen the axe if there, there's probably a, if something seems too hard stop <laughs> sharpen the axe and then go at it again later yep. Yep. and you'll you'll just be more you'll have more throughput doing yep. that or probably in this example like maybe the axe is the wrong tool yeah yeah that's... you know like um trying to nail in a hammer with an axe yeah it'll work Right, you'll get it done eventually, <laughs> but but you might break it in half as well. I don't know. Yeah, some metaphor there. Well, yeah, I was so I was talking with uh, on Twitter. There, I have a friend who I think he's got into sales recently in tech and just like couldn't get into it. He's like, man, I just I just you, you start talking about servers and migrations and all this stuff, and like I just kind of die inside. I was like, dude, he's if. It just if you think of each one of these pieces of tech as like another tool in your tool belt or like another shade to to paint your creations in or like another way of leveling yourself up like that's that's where i was going i was thinking i'm the axe right but sure. yeah, yeah, yeah you can also have like the i think that the tool belt one is also a great one like i i we just got a new house so hence the new background and stuff yes. but um I'm, I'm like i'm excited to get new tools like totally. <laughs> we just got like the new pliers to to hook the the washing machine in and that was a whole adventure 
uh, that had a lot of spraying water and stuff in it, but it was kind of fun. And now I'd like know stuff. And, and I also went to the store and got tools specifically for that task. And it was much better than just trying to go at it with a plier. Like I was doing originally. <laughs> so, like so like the, your, your analogy of like nailing in a, a nail with a hammer is, is unfortunately relevant to my life. Yes, right now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I think like, um, if I, if I look back, like on trying to automate things or trying to make parts of my job easier or trying to make our code base better, um, doing, ha having this set of tools in my tool belt, um, it, it actually not only made the problems I was trying to solve easier, but it made some things that I thought were impossible possible. Yeah. You know, and, and that to me is the really cool bit about it. Like, um, when when you get something to work that before you were like there's no there's no way i can figure out how to make that work there's no way like yeah um yeah i mean t for me like the the one that personally had the, the biggest like world impact was um i wrote the um angular the ng upgrade schematic that converted all the lazy loaded children from the string syntax to the import syntax right oh nice i didn't and that, that was just one i was like oh that'd be useful in our code base let's do it and then um, you go, oh, this is actually, you know, half a dozen lines of code that work on every single Angular code base in the world. Um, we can ship that as part of Angular. Um, and then everyone gets that for free. Like, yeah, the chances of you doing a string based replacement that works on every Angular code base in the world. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty slow, right? So yeah. um, it, it gets it gets pretty powerful. It's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. Well, like like uh, maybe to that point, like perhaps, and, and this I think really fits in with the like nailing in a nail with a with an axe uh, reference. You could do this. Like you could the the regex for what you're describing does exist. The regex yes. that works for every single Angular project does exist. But this would yes. be we're talking now like what did you say like 12 lines of code for the ast solution something like that yeah <laughs> yeah we're talking like uh, <laughs> I, I would venture at least 500 lines i mean uh, just edge case after edge case after edge case yeah. would, would pop up right it would yeah it, yeah yeah wouldn't it, wouldn't scale it wouldn't it wouldn't be an effective way to do it it would work you're right it would it, it does somewhere out there in the realm of forms the, that that regex exists, but Almost I have definitely. no interest in trying to mine it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also, I don't want to be the one that has to change it. Like, oh, geez, yeah. The the cool thing about about the the code that you end up writing with ASTs is that they end up looking pretty similar. It's like, okay, cool. Get an AST, query it somehow, like with this one of these CSS selectors, modify it some way, generate the code back again. Yeah, it's a very common pattern that you come up with. And then you go, oh, cool, I've seen this before. Um, sweet, I can change that. Um, yeah. it, it becomes, it's like when you find a really nice abstraction, you're just like, oh, this is the correct way to do this thing. Um, yeah. That's what this feels like always to me. Yeah. Well, so so one of my one of my talks I was going to submit to the CFP. I actually for for those listening, I sent Craig like all of a list of like what was it like ten <laughs> ideas I had. Yeah. You got like the first one before I parsed things out. I took <laughs> it down to three, nice. so I was proud of myself for that. So one of the ones that got kicked out though was um, uh, I I didn't I don't think I ever like fully fleshed out the title, but it's one it's a talk I've wanted to give for a while. So if anyone's out there is listening and like has a show that I could do this talk on, you know, let me know because that could be cool. But it's it's about um, uh, comparing our code to like Rube Goldberg machines. Um, are you familiar with that, Craig? It's like yeah, yeah like the, my dad loves the OK Go uh, music videos where they. Like there's the the crazy machines that do all this stuff and they film it all in one take. When it's you were showing me, YouTube, when you showed me the list of um, of talks, I was yeah. trying to come up with some OK Go pun to like fit in yeah. with the musical thing for you. But yeah, it's a great talk idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, so I, I ended up cutting that one because there's just some other ones I really wanted to talk about. But like, I feel like um, a lot of the times when you're using, when you're writing imperative code, Especially in Angular, when you're if you're living in the Angular world and you're kind of relying on writing this imperative code and using like uh, change detection to kind of uh, crank your machine almost right, you get in you 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 have to write 
that kind of stuff. You have to write this weird, like, Rube Goldbergian, like, code that, like, relies on this weird thing. Like, essentially, you're relying on the event. But you're, you're not, you're not, your code doesn't look that way. Your code looks like, well, there's some stuff over here, and there's a property over there. And in each one of these methods, there's, there's a line that's going to, like, change that property. And, you know, th it works. Just trust us. <laughs> and it's, it's... It's the same thing. Like it, it's the same thing as what you were talking about with um, ASTs and, um, and, and versus regex. Like reactive making making reactive apps is completely possible with change detection and just imperative code and just using like oh what's what's the name for it like uh, MVC kind of <laughs> models. But you're you're you'll be so much better off and like the perfect the perfect example of a reactive app using these methods exists it absolutely does totally. but i don't want to mine for that when i could just write like five lines of rxjs code instead and get the same result yep. so yeah i'm yeah. gonna age myself by saying this but um <laughs> if you've ever worked on a backbone app um the the debugging of just following around event names from one mm. point in your application that's being fired in a bunch of different places, it's it works. You so can so how does the, how does the API look for that? Because I'm I'm not familiar with Backbone. I'm 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 a I'm green dude. You got look. You I can't. <laughs> this is this is how long it's been since I did it. I can't remember. I just okay. think of think of. Um, is it like it's like a callback API though? I imagine. Well, I right. believe they were, they were string-based event names. And I don't know if this is a backbone thing or just the backbone app that I was working on, but mm -hmm. it was like, okay, cool. Three things are telling the model to update. Um, they happen in some order and occasionally they fire in a different order. Now you have a bug. Good luck finding, and then all those three models <laughs> triggers are being triggered by some other model trigger and yeah. tracing your way back. And also this was JavaScript, so there's no types. So it was just, we are slowly approaching, I feel, um, better abstractions for the ways that we build yeah. apps. Um, no, I'm, and you, I'm very, RX, good. I'm very optimistic about a lot of that stuff. Yeah, like I'm, I'm working on a, a lot of the stuff I do at Narwhal for client work is like migration type stuff, and so just um, making me. This is like the previous run of the carousel. Like there's this carousel running. Every seven years, it comes, it comes back to the start, but and it's. it's I don't know. There's this whole talk we could have on like true innovation inside of our world, and is it really happening? But I, I think like at the end of the day, yes, like what you're saying, the the, the abstractions of the tools are getting better each time around. But unfortunately, like there's no new real new features. But in any case, in this migration, I'm I was like trying to figure out, okay, we've got to get rid of there's this ng bind on on our title, you know, the thing that's going to change what's in your um the text in your tab. I was like, okay, we got to make sure all of these things are removed before I can remove that ng bind, or else, you know, uh, the the app is technically going to behaving incorrectly, right? Because it will be trying to change a title, and we thought that title was going to be changing the title, but it won't be anymore. And I was trying to find all instances of this, and I was just like, oh man, how do I do this? <laughs> it's like, let's uh, just like search for. <laughs> Pray that everyone named things correctly and just look for like root scope dot title <laughs> was like the answer and I <laughs> and that like worked reasonably well but like uh, for the size code base it's like how and, and you can't look for title either because titles all over everything I, I tried doing that as it's like a hundred thousand references in a code base to title and I was just like ugh. But um, yeah, that just that like just, is... and just to kind of tie my, these things together. So yeah, I after I worked on the backbone, the bigger backbone app at the previous company I was at, um, we moved on to um, an Angular JS app. Um, yeah, and because we had been bitten so badly by just random event passing mechanisms, mm -hmm. um, we were like, okay, we should try to not use root scope. However, we can um, not pass events up. And so we wrote a lint rule to not use root scope when we didn't want to, and we used an AST to do that. And it's like, this is this is the world of problems that you can then suddenly solve. You're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, you know, you go, oh, we shouldn't do that thing. We can codify that, write our own lint rule. It's a couple of lines of code. It's really yeah. cheap, and we save ourselves the pain down the road. So that's super interesting, and that worked well for you. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I believe, cause, so again, the, con the context is quite specific. Um, yeah. We did AngularJS with TypeScript from day one. Oh, um, wow. So we were like, this is pre 1.0 for, for TypeScript. Yeah. Um, so th this was a, a particularly cool project. Um, but that yeah, that, awesome, that, that tended to work for us. We, um, I don't think we avoided all, you know, passing messages to Rootscope or whatever, um, which I had not thought about for like five years. So thank you. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, You're it's, um, I think, you know, we, we had, we probably had a global service that did something equivalent, but the, the subtle difference between a method on a singleton that you call to update something versus yes. passing a string around, um, Functionally, they're the same, but in terms of refactorability or understandability, they're, they're quite different. So Yeah. Well, th this is kind of leading into the the CFP that I actually did submit. Like, th this was the big one I put my my chips behind was um, was talking about uh, building our apps, uh, borrowing with from understanding from modern medicine, which is like when you think of the human body, the way modern medicine understands it is a, a series of like, these discrete but overlapping systems like you have the nervous system you have the skeletal system you have the respiratory system and your different organs belong to these different types of systems the systems like relate to functionality um, that they that they encompass so like uh, when i was thinking about this problem i was like uh just like how could we do the title thing better like there needs to be a title system or it could be a part of the router system, depending on how you want to do it. Like there's, you could have a router, or a, if you want the behavior of your title to be entirely dependent on your router, it could obviously just be part of that router system. However, if you wanted to do something more interesting with the title, you could make it its own system that also has like some discrete events that other things could pass as well. And that, that's kind of like, I think Angular has the title service out of the box. Yep. like that that is that like um in some way but like also just well, how do we want to use that um because having a service is one thing that's that's kind of getting to what you you had mentioned where you have a singleton that where you just like call that method on it but then you have this and it's not that bad but you you have this thing where well that could be called from anywhere if i want to if i just want to see every th place where i'm changing the service in one locale um that's that would be like a step up from that i feel like like more systematizing it to make it more you know more isolated and yep. yeah i don't know uh, so i i'm 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 hoping that talk gets selected <laughs> we'll yeah see. it sounds but, awesome to me yeah and nice. I, th I think the funny thing is like if you start talking about the human body is again how do messages get around the human body yep you know, hormones and all those yeah. kind of things, which are just yeah, messages. Yeah. It's just passing a message. Um, Absolutely. It's basically, it's basically Redux, right? It's yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm super excited because um, I, I put in like what 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 else do we need to know about this talk? You know that that no one else sees. I wrote well, uh, if if this is selected, I'll seek out like evolutionary biologists to talk about this kind of stuff with, so I can because I think there's a lot of stuff there. Like really, uh, regardless of your feelings on how, how humans got here, like whether it's billions of years of evolutionary, you know, uh, progress or some like divine creator like dropped us here or like aliens just wanted to have fun and threw, <laughs> threw some <laughs> genes in there. I actually think it's, made, it's probably some combination of the three things. <laughs> but like regardless of where, where you go with it, the human bodily body is equally as impressive and there's like we need to draw more from that and i think totally. if you look at some of our more like cool inventions like the automobile is kind of human-like like if you think about it like it needs to sit down and eat <laughs> like you need to put fuel into it yep. it's it's discharging stuff and it's got like these systems to to go and like this exoskeleton it's i don't know there's, there's a lot of stuff there that i think we could draw on and just like uh, for my career, the whole thing has been okay. There's that carousel. I gotta figure a way of jumping that, uh, <laughs> like trying to get get past that. And I don't know to to kind of uh, to be able to think about those things, and try to draw from other other disciplines to kind of inform the way we think about things. I think there's a lot of power in that. I don't know if that's like th there's <laughs> there's some level out there. I think where you jump the where you jump the carousel entirely. 
and I don't think this is that, but I think this could help speed it up a little bit at least. And but. I think I think you're definitely on the right the right track there. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is like the whole question of like is what we do engineering. Mm. You know what I mean? And I feel like <laughs> it's it's a big question, much much bigger than than either of us can can answer. But there's this there's a um, there's a newness to what to what we still do with software, right? Like we're talking about complexity that is potentially like if you look at the size of the internet as a system, massive, massively massive, incomprehensibly massive. Um, and then you look at the age of computers. You know, we've only had them for you know some tens of years. Yeah. Um, we haven't that's got such, that good at doing it yet. Exactly. Yeah. And then you look at the human system, which is a system, and it's a system that has, you know however you look at it, um, evolved in some way to have some super weird things about it and some super logical things about it. Um, how do we take, or, or the car example, right? How do we take those processes of designing those systems and actually make sure we are engineering code? You know, not just not just hitting an ax with a, hitting a hammer with an ax and making it work, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and, and just understanding that like, given the proper perspective like this is uh, this is so new like if you think of it in terms of biology like this is the 10 was was it like uh 70 years since like computing like proper computing um came out like yep. man it's like how cut us <laughs> cut us some yeah. slack <laughs> like exactly. we're uh thinking that but also just knowing okay we are, we're definitely, we definitely are right now hammering in nails with axes. How can we just like get that 1% better <laughs> from to, from yesterday to today? And then just kind of keep going, iterate on that as much as possible. And the, and the interest on that is, is, is astounding. I think if we, but I think we're, we are too easy to throw off that yoke. Mm -hmm. uh, like we, we just go directly to you know, this is we've done this for for 30 years. There's people I know who have 30 year long, young, long careers like um, it's it's understandable in that scenario to think, OK, you've got a lot of experience. I'll trust you. And I feel like people who have been in the, this industry 30 years tend to be pretty set in their ways. And that's understandable, too. So, and yeah, I think there's there's yeah. the whole um, like take take front-end frameworks right mm. like i've never understood hitching one's belt to one in particular yeah. that's even the, the phrase whatever it is putting one's hat on it anyway um they're around for a short period of time inside the lifespan of a short-lived industry right mm -hmm. it's just there is no way that in 10 years time we're going to be having this conversation and still be talking about angular we'll be talking about it like i talked about backbone which is like, oh remember that thing remember how we used to do that that was weird um <laughs> and that's fine right that's yeah. like that's acknowledging okay cool this is really fast changing we are learning a lot right now it's really exciting discovery phase don't be a dick to people online because they're trying a slightly different shaped X than you are to yes. hit in a nail. You're all oh. idiots. It's yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Like uh, in, in that perspective too, like you, we talk about backbone, like, oh, how foolish we were back then. Oh, way back then, like three years ago. Exactly. Like, Come on, dude. <laughs> like, and, 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 and like, we're, just that, 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 the idea of that carousel is so pervasive because like, if you if you let your perspective get dominated by that carousel, I think we, we do get into this thing where like, yes, backbone is completely irrelevant now. What we're doing is uh, like <laughs> st uh, orders of degrees better. When, uh, but if you pu push your perspective back a little bit, it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, this is essentially the same thing. There's maybe some nicer tools. And, and yep. I think like it's definitely worthwhile staying on that carousel just to... The, if, if nothing else for the better tooling that 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 it's spinning out and um like and like to to stretch the carousel to its absolute end of its metaphor like <laughs> even if the carousel hasn't changed that much as it's gone around it's still changed so if it comes around and it's um to get rid of the metaphor, let's talk about server rendering versus client rendering right that's a carousel that keeps going around right yeah it, it's a pendulum that swings, whatever you want to say. 
but it's slightly different. We have learned some stuff from seven years ago. So yeah. saying, like approaching it with the same attitude to me doesn't make sense. The, the better attitude is to go, huh, the, these are things that I know and things that I've tried, but what's the delta? What's changed in, the, in those yes. times? Because things will have got better. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Even if it's at the servers are faster now, that's a good thing. Like yes. it's, it's okay to revisit past ideas and see how it's changed and see what can, can be tweaked or learned from. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it feels to me like it's just like the dimension of the change is maybe not what you expect it to be. Like we expect the circle to get larger when in fact, like the circle is just getting elevated higher or something like that. So yeah. that, that's, that's kind of my, my view on it, but yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah, I think I love, I love talks about systems. I love like, I, I want to see someone come to a, a conference and talk about political theory and be like, cool, this is how capitalism works. And this is why it's a system. And this yeah. is how it relates to, the act of programming rather than the the capitalistic entity of being in a software business. But like, yeah, talk oh, about dude, I haven't even considered that. That's you know, really like, good. let's talk about revolution. Let's talk about like the French Revolution and the similarities to when a new framework comes out and everyone rewrites all their code. Like, yeah. it's all just systems. And it gets me gets me happy. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I really want to bone up more on just like, basic other things than other fields. Like I, I'm really, I think regardless of whether my talk gets picked, I'm going to look into like, let's, let's find a good intro book on, on evolutionary biology and just trying to like consume more history so I can understand things a little bit more. Totally. Like just, just a very cursory thing. I'm like baffled that we're still here after world war two. Like it's, it doesn't make sense. So it's yep. like, yeah, we, we stockpiled nukes and then we released two and then we were done. <laughs> it's like, what, wait, what? Yeah, you start talking about the cold war and it's like, Oh, <laughs> and then we stockpiled a bunch more. Right. Don't worry. We never, we never actually used them. Like I remember it would have been, I mean, this, again, I'm going to age myself and talk about dumb stuff. When I think Linkin Park released an album called Minutes to Midnight and I had never oh, heard dude. of the, of the, like the, the midnight clock, clock idea. Exactly. Yeah. Like the doomsday clock. Like that's a thing that exists yeah. of how close we have been over history to destroying yeah. ourselves. Yeah. It's not that far. That's, and it's crazy dude. to try to tie this all together in some way, like being okay with learning from history, not needing to reinvent all the wheels all the time yourselves, being okay with looking up a textbook and going, Oh, cool. Someone's done this thing. Yeah. I'm awful at that. I, yeah. I always want to reinvent things and, and try my own way, but it's really good to look at, look at yeah. history and see that people have done these things and, you don't need a totally new hammer. There's something close that you can just pick up. And... Yeah. Well, just just knowing that <laughs> there's carousels everywhere, right? <laughs> like people have done this before. It's you, you like absolutely get on there and like get your hands dirty and, and mess around. But also like know that there's, there's, there's generations of people now, like not that many, but some, some generations of people have done very similar work and we could learn so much from it, especially yeah. when a lot of these ideas, like we were talking about, bring it whole circle down to trees, <laughs> like trees are such a fundamental, like small thing about like computer science, but they're so powerful in terms of like recursive approaches and being able to do something like the query selectors, like, and you, you know, you learn that in one place, you can use it in across all, all different, you know, instances of this kind of tree concept. So, yep. and I think like that's, that's stuff that in my like computer science education, um, I missed out on quite a bit of like I was I was doing web stuff I was you know having to consider the the horizontal of all the things right. that we talk about in web um, and so that meant I didn't go so deep on some of the fundamentals like ask me about big O and I'm going to get confused I can figure it out eventually you know those kind of yeah, things yeah, yeah. Um, and if, if this has worked well as a source of things to talk about for me so if someone out there is like I really want to give a talk at a conference but I don't know what to talk about pick some obscure comp say concept and just go real deep on it talk about memory you know oh. we have we all work in javascript it's a garbage collected language most of the time i don't think about memory um yeah. but weak refs are coming out and what is that going to mean you know all, oh, all these kind of things you know, i haven't so. even heard of this yet dude <laughs> you oh. scared me i yeah. thought my days of malik were over <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Well, we're all in a wasm world now, right? We have we have these things. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's a scary new world, but it's all but we've it, all. It's the stuff that's all been around, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Exactly. It's all scary, but it's also all the same stuff. The sky is always falling, yeah. right? That's yeah. that's the whole thing. Well, the think sky. of how boring life would be if you didn't get scared once in a while, right? Like, there, there's yeah, a lot of excitement there too. Once in a while, I'm I'm kind yeah. of over this like constant existential dread. Oh. No, but. Yes. <laughs> no, current events, have, I'm d definitely very enthused by that. Just yep. my biggest thing is just, I'm just so looking forward to getting out of like reactionary thinking for every GD thing we do. Like the last four years have been crisis response, crisis response, crisis response with no, with no proactivity whatsoever. And I'm very much looking forward to some stability just from not having to be hooked into the the news cycle dude but yeah 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 i mean obviously like <laughs> it's it's a whole different world for a lot of different people um and so much is going on all the time um there's a you know there's the i'm, I'm pretty sure it's mlk my american history is not good enough but that the moral arc of the universe tends towards good right it's like mm. Yes, stuff is over time incrementally getting better. What can I do right now to make sure that stuff is heading in the right direction? Um, yeah. Whether that's code or um, saying, you know what, well, I'm a high earner, I should go help out my community in some way. Yeah. Um, it's oh, that's a lot. That's something that's been on my mind a lot recently too, dude. But yeah, yeah. I I gotta get you back on. I've unfortunately got to go right now. No worries. It's such a, like an awesome conversation. Maybe we could do it again like next week. Or something. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just floating around. I'm, I'm stuck in these four walls and my brain is going <laughs> lots of different directions all the time. So well, always, always it, happy. Yeah, well, it, it sounds like they're going some really interesting places. So <laughs> very cool. Dude. Thanks so much for, for coming on and, and sharing all this stuff. And like for, for these open source projects, like this is awesome. Uh, it's helped me out already. <laughs> so Amazing. Thank you so that, much. That, that's the point, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's you know, funny story. I wrote most of it sitting at NG Conf 2018. You know, just That's so cool. It's, you know, just the, just thinking of the amount of value you produce from that amount of time is astounding. But yeah, yeah. thanks so much for everything you do, man. Thanks no so much worries. for coming on and chatting. And man, I'm looking forward to having you on again soon. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Catch you later. Yep. See y'all. Bye.